do i say this is the heart of fetal heart these uh, common abnormalities you know this is uh, very important to have this understanding it's such a it's actually a, something like a fetal heart has become a very big deal because there's so much uh, stuff now with the uh, understanding of uh, the anomalies so now this is the can you see my screen now the anomalies yes, yes, of the output yes, yes sir we yes. can go ahead yeah right and now this is uh, like a pretty important group of lesions not that the four chamber view is important but from a cardiologist perspective these are important because many of these anomalies are critical but they are also amenable to correction so that is the two words critical but amenable to correction so a human effort can actually make a difference in a life of an individual you pick them properly counsel them properly take the correct decisions you can potentially save a life now the second important thing is that like some of these lesions can be associated with genetic syndromes particularly 22q deletion also called the dijord syndrome so it is important that we are very holistic in our approach towards these lesions so this is the algorithm which uh, and uh, in that uh, four chamber view we covered quite a lot uh, alpana is going to cover the situs in the next lecture so you know between the two of that most of the lesions are covered so the ventricular arterial junction and the anomalies relating to that is what i'm covering in fact there is a very close uh, connection between the three vessel and the outflow anomaly so often there could be a little bit of uh, repetition in the subsequent lecture but here we are essentially going to focus on the lesion where the ventricular arterial junction and relation is buried now this is a repetition but worth repeating the lvot view some people say that uh, the fetal heart if you do four chamber and three vessel you get all the details but at differ because this is important this particular uh, image which you see of the lvot is important because it is important to demonstrate the continuity between the ventricular septum which is the dotted line and the aortic wall which is the bold line so this is called the uh, the septo aortic continuity so the lateral view it is shown septo aortic continuity now this is an extremely important concept in the fetal heart and uh, if you do not have this then you have a important group of conditions so this is the normal heart also there could be a similar kind of continuity between the aorta and the mitral valve which is called the aorto mitral continuity which we don't talk so much so in the fetal heart compared to the septo aortic continuity now this is the rvot and we so the outflow tracks crossing these are the three basic concepts in the outflow track views which we want to see now let us look at the various anomalies and see how the these things are di different uh, the important four lesions which we need to understand in the outflow anomaly group is the tetralogy of fallow spectrum which is itself is a massive group then the double outlet right ventricle spectrum which is so complicated Uh, in its uh, spectrum that you know um, you, uh, you talk on dorv you can keep talking so nevertheless i will sum summarize the basic concepts then you have the common arterial trunk also called the trunkus arteriosus and then we have the transposition which there was somebody was asking a question about tga cctg etc so this four group of lesions very common and very large number of conditions so first is tetralogy and this is often your first clue so i'm going to go in a systematic manner this is the first clue towards outflow you see the two equal size ventricle you see this gap in the septum and you see an overriding vessel so everybody jumps and says tetralogy of fallow when you see this just like when everybody sees a tricuspid valve regurgitation says epstein's anomaly but this picture could mean a bit more than tetralogy of fallow so we will come to that so the first step in the outflow anomaly is when you see a picture like this a vsd with an overriding vessel you try to identify the overriding vessel first so the overriding vessel could be either the aorta or it could be the pulmonary artery so here in the first picture you see that the overriding vessel is not branching it is a single vessel which is going and that is an overriding aorta and in the second you see that overriding vessel if you look carefully it comes and you see the division here it's a bifurcating vessel so that is an overriding pa 
so first something new for you today is that all that overrides is not iota in pa also can over okay so then you are entire and if you look carefully at the second picture you see that there is even a, a ventricular you know the, the the inversion also the left ventricle seems to be on the right side here so that will come to that a little later so this is important to identify the overriding vessel so what the first and the most common lesion is this you have a normal looking four chamber view and but when you look at the cardiac axis here you find that there was a left towards shift of the cardiac axis even though the first glance of the four chamber view looked normal so this gave you a clue that okay this is not normal next when you sweep towards the five chamber view or the lvot view the vst becomes very obvious and there is an overriding vessel which in this case was traced as the iota so we have a vst with an overriding iota that iota is now very very clear in both the views there is a vsd with an overriding iota the five chamber view so normal heart you have the septo aortic continuity here what is happening there is a septo aortic discontinuity same way in the lateral view septo aortic continuity in this case there is a septo aortic discontinuity so you find this gap you see this gap between the septum and the aorta the gap between the septum and the aorta that is the vsd so this vsd is referred to as the mal aligned vsd caused by the mal alignment of the septum and the aorta and this is a classical description of the vsd in tetralogy so it's a mal aligned vsd people also sometimes refer to this as sub aortic vsd or perimembranous vsd sometimes it's called a cono ventricular vsd cono ventricular means between the coronal septum of the aorta and the ventricular septum but a correct description is a mal aligned vsd due to the mal alignment of the septum and the aorta that is a classical description of the vsd the cono ventricular is also a very good description so this is a classical vsd which you find in tetralogy of fallow and this you can only appreciate in the in the lvot view you cannot see this vsd in either the four chamber view or in the three vessel when you put color you find that both the ventricles are rejecting into that common single outflow like and often there will be some aliasing of the blood due to a larger amount of blood uh, going into the aorta this is the it's a little bit of aliasing both the ventricles are rejecting into the out aorta aorta often it will look very big also because it's receiving more blood than normal and when it goes to the three vessel view you see there is a forward flow here into the pa but when you compare the size of the aorta and the pulmonary artery you find that the aorta is actually quite big while the pulmonary artery is small so in the three vessel view what you find is that there is a discrepant size of the outflows with the larger pulmonary artery and a smaller aorta so these are the features of tetralogy of fall normal four chamber view a large mal aligned cono ventricular vst in the lvot view smaller pulmonary artery vis-a-vis -vis a larger aorta in the three vessel view with this you say okay this is a diagnosis of tetralogy of fall so in this case as alpena said it's worth measuring some structures typically what i measure in tetralogy of fallow is size of the aorta and the three vessel view size of the main pulmonary artery i measure the it's the same aorta and the pulmonary artery in three vessel view i also measure the pulmonary valve annulus i measure the right pulmonary artery and i measure the left pulmonary artery. now i also calculate the z score of all these structures for the gestational age we can get the z score and when i follow up this patient i serially measure the same measurements and if i find that the pulmonary artery is becoming smaller and smaller and smaller and the z scores are becoming more and more minus as the gestation advances i understand that the pulmonic stenosis is progressing in utero and sometimes a mild form of stenosis in the beginning can end up with a more severe stenosis at the time of end of the pregnancy which means that the child may need an immediate neonatal intervention so this is very very important so 
A normal heart, the PA to iota ratio is about 1.16, which the PA is larger than the iota. Mild forms of tetralogy typically have the PA to iota ratio of about 0.7 or more. And here, as we see, the PA Z score is minus 1.1. It is small, but not very small. While in the very severe forms, as we see here, the pulmonary artery is very diminutive. The pulmonary artery Z score is minus 3.76 here. And the PA to iota ratio in this case is less than 0 0.5. So that is severe stenosis. And often the severe stenosis will be a very cyanotic patient at the time of birth. We also should look at the three vessel tracheal view and look at the pattern of flow. And we find a very funny kind of orientation of the three vessel tracheal view. You see here, the pulmonary artery seems to be inserting much more proximally to the iota. The reason is that there is often a very, very unusual alignment of the ductus arteriosus and TOF, a more vertical kind of a ductus. That's why the V becomes something like a Y. And the PA side, the smaller size, which we can appreciate, the iota is bigger, the smaller PA size, and there is all anti-grade flow. But later on, sometimes in the PA, you may get a retrograde flow, the red flow. That means that the lesion has progressed towards a severe obstruction of the pulmonary artery, the form of pulmonary atresia here. So, and also the last clue in top is that the aortic arch side can be seen. This is, right, the first picture is a left arch, the second is a right arch, and third is a double arch. And when you have right arch or double arch with tetralogy of fallow, there is a higher likelihood of association with 22Q deletion syndrome. A garden variety of top with left touch is up about 15% risk. But when you have a right touch, the risk can go up to 25 to 30%. So top with the right touch, map cast, et cetera, can be a reason for asking for an amnio and uh, testing for 22Q deletion. So the findings of tetralogy of fallow, four chamber view, typically normal structures, axis could be shifted to left. The five chamber or LVOT view, septo aortic discontinuity. The three vessel view, normal relationships of great arteries, the pulmonary artery is smaller than the iota. And a three vessel tracheal view, same color flow, and the side of the arch, and also as a bonus, the thymus can be seen. In fact, that will give clues towards your uh, probability of associated 22 to deletion. So, this is the sonographic summary of the features of tetralogy of family. Let us quickly look at a couple of variants here. So this is another case where you see a, a overriding iota, a large iota. And when you look carefully in the next picture, the branch pulmonary arteries are seen. The RP and LP are very small structures. And when you look at color, you see this picture. You see this picture. And what you find is that there is a forward flow into the iota. And there is a lot of aliasing. And if you look carefully, there is even a bit of aortic regurgitation but there is a retrograde flow into the pulmonary artery. So this means that there is a, a large iota with a overriding iota with anti-grade flow and retrograde flow into PA means the pulmonary atresia. No flow into the PA, but only through the retrograde flow through the ductus arteriosus. And the branch PAs are very small. Another example of TOF, there is overriding, Iota, and when you look at the pulmonary artery outflow, you find this very characteristic picture of a to and fro flow into the pulmonary artery. That is the to and fro flow. There is both the stenosis and the regurgitation. And what you find here is that the pulmonary arteries are enormously dilated. So there is overriding iota, there is a dysplastic valve, pulmonary valve with both stenosis and regurgitation and dilated pulmonary artery. And when you put this Doppler of the pulmonary valve, you find there is a systolic flow as well as a diastolic flow. So this is systolic flow, this is a diastolic flow. There is pulmonary stenosis and regurgitation. So this is an example of tetralogy of fallow with absent pulmonary valve, a variant of tetralogy of fallow. The characteristic feature of this is that the pulmonary arteries are dilated, which is a very unusual finding for tetralogy of fallow. So postnatal presentation, you can have a highly varied spectrum, and it is important to identify these features in utero itself. You could have pulmonary atresia in top or even critical stenosis, or it could be a milder form of stenosis. The critical forms will need a neonatal intervention followed by corrective surgery. 
while the milder forms can go for an elective surgery in a later date. So what are the features which could predict the critical forms? One is that generally the smaller the PA, you say that a stenosis is more severe, especially if the PAs are becoming more and more small with the gestational age. Second is the color flow pattern. If you have no anti-grade flow, but predominantly retrograde flow into the pulmonary artery, that clearly tells that it is a very critical circulation. The third is the pulmonary valve Doppler. One study showed that if the peak pulmonary valve gradient was very high, more than 0.9 at 20 weeks and more than 150 centimeters per second at 34 weeks, this would mean that the stenosis of the pulmonary valve would be severe mandating or requiring an intervention. So I would rely more on the sizes of the pulmonary artery and the direction of the flow in the ductus, particularly the ductal flow patterns. This will give us a very valuable clue regarding the severity of the stenosis. Right, so that much for tetralogy. Now let us go to the next lesion, which is uh, similar to tetralogy, but somewhat slightly different. The four chamber view, it shows there is a defect in the septum, which becomes more obvious with the five chamber. There is an override also seen. That's the VSD with override. But when we move further, we see that the aortic override is so much so that it seems that a lot of aorta seems to be uh, more from the RV rather than the LV. But as we can see from the arrows, the uh, pathway from the LV to iota is also C. So that's it. See, this is the degree of override is very, very significant. The iota seems to be predominantly from the right ventricle, but we can see the pathway from the LV to the iota. This is actually a scan which I had done in uh, Dr. Vijay Barwe's uh, uh, you know, unit when we had gone there for that workshop. We are doing a demo there and we could see very clearly that, you know, that, that the very degree of override and then you could see that that the that, that LV to iota that pathway is rather elongated here, very characteristic. And as we see the outflow tracks now here, the iota seems to be substantially overriding and mostly from the RV and the pulmonary artery is from a more anterior view. We can see the pulmonary artery is also from the RV. Both the great arteries are arising from the RV. So this is an example of a double outlet right ventricle. The pulmonary artery is smaller than the iota, so there is pulmonary stenosis. Three vessel view showed the PA is smaller than the iota, just like what would you expect in tetralogy. So the findings in this case was an, a large malaligned VSD, iota overriding substantially that most of it is from the RV, and PA is also from the RV with a smaller PA suggesting pulmonary stenosis. So a double outlet right ventricle is defined as a lesion where both the outflow tracts are predominantly supported by the morphological right ventricle. And in the fetal life, you can remember the more than 50% override group. More than 50% of the iota is come from the RV. So how do you separate TOF from DORV is this 50% override group. In tetralogy, typically the override will be in such a way that the iota is sort of equally committed to both the RV and the LV. However, in DORV, when you have uh, the iota will be more uh, committed to the right ventricle than to the left ventricle. So that's more than 50% override. The other methods are there. Like when you look at this here, the aortic valve and the mitral valve are continuous. While in this case, aortic valve and the mitral valve are discontinuous. You see this where my arrow is pointing, there is a white fibrous, uh, you know, uh, bundle, which is separating the mitral and aortic valve, that is called aortomitral discontinuity in DORV. So if you truly want to define DORV, it is aortomitral discontinuity and more than 50% over that. The other type of DORV, we saw the classical TOF type, and here you see balanced ventricle, and here you see that both the outflows are arising from the right ventricle here as we can see in this picture. And when we put color, you see again, the, that flow showing the VSD and both the iota and PA are arising from the right ventricle. And in this, we can very clearly see the double outlet origin of the right ventricle. What you find is that the more anterior outflow is not dividing 
called a more posterior outflow is bifurcating here. So the anterior outflow is aorta, while the posterior outflow is a PA, which means that the great arteries are transposed here. So this is what we call the TGA type of DORV, where the, the aorta is completely from the RV, PA is also mostly from the RV, but the first and the more posterior outflow is the PA. And the aorta will be continuing as the aortic arch here in this case without any obstruction. So this is an example of a DORV, which is a TGA type. So when you look at DORV, you have the two common types, the TOF type where the VSD is subaortic, great arteries are normally related, and often there is some amount of pulmonary stenosis. And second is a TGA type of DORV, where the VSD is typically below the pulmonary valve or subpulmonic. The great arteries are transposed. The aorta is more anterior and the PA is posterior. Now, from here, you can have a multiple variations with uh, uh, coarctation, arch hyperplasia, and so many. And so I won't be discussing into uh, those types. Now, I am demonstrating here a simple uh, technique called tomographic ultrasound imaging, in which you can see a multiple planes of the fetal heart, just like one would you would see in a CT or an MRI. Uh, data set. So, in the most caudal frame, you can see the BSD here and the ventricles. In the middle frame, you see that the, both the great arteries are arising from the right ventricle. And the topmost cranial, you see the great arteries, how the three vessel facial view. So, this tells us the DORV TGA type with unobstructed outflow tracts and aortic arch, and all in one single, uh, you know, uh, uh, cine loop in the TOI mode of a demonstration. Okay, so that much about the double outlet right ventricle. So I'm not covering the more complex forms of DORV in this lecture, obviously, because we can't finish this session if you uh, continue to do that. Then we have this next entity, where you see that the ventricles are equal, and you see there is a large vessel here. There's a very large vessel coming off from the right ventricle. And that vessel is giving rise to the aorta as well as the pulmonary artery. So this is the big one is aorta. And you see this vessel and which is dividing into two. So that is a pulmonary artery, where the arrow, that is a pulmonary artery. So this is an example of a common arterial trunk. The common arterial trunk is characterized by presence of a VSD. And there is a single trunk which arises from the heart which gives rise to both the iota and the pulmonary artery. There are three different types of common arterial trunk on whether the PA arises as a common trunk and then divides, which is a type one, whether the pulmonary, the two branches arise separately from the iota, which is type two, and type three, whether they arise separately and in a very distal manner. So those are more complex. What we need to just understand the concept of a common arterial trunk. Now, there are two lesions where you have a, a, a VSD with an overriding vessel with a single outflow. One is a common arterial trunk and the second is a TOF with pulmonary atresia. So this is like a two lesions which need to be separated. And uh, how do you separate this? Now you need to look at the color flow and you see how the flow into the pulmonary artery is. So in a TOF with a pulmonary atresia, there will be a forward flow into the iota but there will be a retrograde flow into the pulmonary artery. You see, because the pulmonary artery is fed through the ductus arteriosus. However, in the common arterial trunk or trungus, there will be a forward flow into the iota, and also there will be a forward flow into the pulmonary artery as well, because these are actually arising as one branch, which one continues as iota, and the other is the PA. So in common arterial trunk, the direction of flow of PA and iota are same. While in a pulmonary atresia, iota is anti-grade flow, while in the PA, it is a retrograde flow through the ductus arteriosus. Now, this is an important differentiating point. And whenever I talk about this, I remember our very, very close friend, and all of you know him, he's known more with us, Chandrasekhar Kenjale. He is uh, one of the most, one was such a gifted speaker and a gifted radiologist. And I heard him talk about this in one of the meetings in Nashik, and I was so moved by his description. So whenever I present this slide, I remember him. And uh, God bless him always. Okay, now with that, we move to the final end in this outflow anomaly, 
and this will hopefully answer some of the questions which uh, were asked in the uh, chat box. So we have covered tetralogy of fallow, we have covered the DORV common types, and we have covered common arterial trunk. We also learned how to separate common arterial trunk from the uh, this uh, top of the pulmonary arteries. Now we move on to a very, very important group of lesions in the fetus, which is a TGA. So the transposition, the common feature of TGA is that the outflow tracts are abnormally related. The important thing is that the iota comes from the right vent and the pulmonary artery comes from the left vent. So there are two types of TGA. The first type is where the atrioventricular relationship is normal or concordant. That is called the complete uh, TGA or, the, or what we call the DTGA. DTGA means the right ventricle is the D or right side. The second type is the AV discordance where the, 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 the atrioventricular relationship is discordant. So which means the tricuspid valve has come to the left side. So the right ventricle is on the left side here. That is called the LTGA or the L loop of the right ventricle or also called congenitally corrected uh, transposition. Some, most of you call this CCTGA. Either way it is correct, it doesn't matter what is your terminal. So you have DTGA or LTGA or corrected TGA, uh, CCTGA is LT. So let us study this case, which is the normal looking four chamber view here. But the second view, which is the LBOT view, you pick up the first tip clue. You look at this vessel here, and I'll come back to this in great detail. There is something odd about this LBOT. The way it is going, it is not going in the normal this way. Normally, you would I go, expect the iota to go from the left ventricle towards the right. Here, this vessel is going like this. It is dipping posteriorly, see, towards the spine. So normally the LVOT direction is this way, that is towards the right, while in the TGA you see this is towards this. And you also note an important difference here. You look at this LVOT, you can clearly see it bifurcating, see one branch and the second branch. So not only is that uh, first outflow bifurcating, but the direction in which the first flow, that, uh, outflow is running is also posteriorly towards the left rather than anteriorly and towards the right. So this is the difference, the first clue. Then when we come to the thick plane of both the outflows, normally you would expect the outflows to cross. Iota is a red line and the PA is the blue line. You expect them to cross. Here, what do you see? The pulmonary artery is going posteriorly. Iota is the anterior outflow is running parallel. You don't see the crossing. You see the two outflows are parallel to each other. And by the time that is a parallel outflow seen here, very nicely in color. And if you look at this color picture, you see that the first outflow is bifurcating as well. Normally you expect the outflow to cross like this, but here you see parallel outflows. And by that, and then what do you see? Normally the ductus arteriosus will continue as a ductal arch, as a more anterior arch here. Here, what do you see? The aortic. It's the anterior, and that is the continuing as the arch here. A more curved arch here, the more anterior arch. Three clues. And the most important is this. Normally, you find the three vessel view like this, but in this lesion, you only find two vessels in the three vessel view, only the iota and the SVC. The reason is because the PA has already come as a posterior vessel, and it is not visualized in the three vessel view. So this particular view, which you are seeing in your screen now, is actually the view you get in TGA during the screening. Screening. So whenever you get this picture, one of the important conditions, TGA is not the only condition, one of the important conditions you should suspect is the TGA, and you should go back to the outflow and the other views to confirm how the great arteries are related. Now let us study this particular case. So this is an example. What we saw now was a complete TGA. Now let us look at this picture. The four chamber view itself gives you a very useful clue here. You see this ventricle is perhaps a little smallish, but it's also maybe due to the cut. The right is marked here, but you find a rather smooth ventricle on the right side. 
and a more trabeculated ventricle here, you see that the right side, this valve is at a higher level, the right sided valve, while the left sided valve is at a lower level. You find that the pulmonary veins are in fact draining normally into the left sided atria here. So the atrium level, it is all good, but the valve, it seems to be abnormal. That's exactly what we confirm. The tricuspid valve is in fact in the left side and the mitral valve is on the right side. The pulmonary, sorry, the pulmonary veins are draining into the left-sided atrium, but there is an atrioventricular discordance, discordance. So this is a normal uh, greater uh, the AV relationship, but this is what you find in CCTGA. What you find is that the tricuspid valve is left-sided and the mitral valve is right-sided. So normally, the right ventricle is uh, right-sided, and here the right ventricle is left-sided. So normally, the pulmonary veins are draining normally, and here also it's draining normally. So the atrial level, everything is normal, but at the level of the AV connection, things are abnormal. So normally, you find the offsetting like this with the tricuspid valve at the lower level on the right side. Here you see what is the reverse offsetting. The right-sided valve is at a higher level, the left-sided valve is at a lower level. The reason is because the atria are normal here, LA receives pulmonary veins, but the AV valves have become reversed. So tricuspid valve is on the left side, mitral valve is on the right side. That's why the mitral valve is at a higher level. And the ventricles are also reversed. The right ventricle is on the left side and the left ventricle is on the right side. So this is atrioventricular discordance, which you find in CCTG. And then the outflows. The first outflow, as we can very clearly see, is bifurcating, and that is coming from the right-sided LV. That is what you see here. You see the right-sided LV. If you look very carefully here, you may even argue with me that the pulmonary artery seems to be sort of overriding also. And you are right, because there is also a VSD here in this case. And then the final outflow is the uh, iota, which is arising from the right ventricle, just like what you would find in the TG, iota from the right ventricle. So here is an example of a CCTG. The difference between the previous one and this one is that there is, in addition to the transposition relationship, there is also an atrioventricular discordance. So if you do not play heat to this four chamber view, this findings of atrioventricular discordance and straight away go to the uh, outflow track, you will mislabel this entity as a TGA and miss the corrected transposition altogether. Altogether. You understand. That's why it is so important to uh, go in a systematic manner. So we conclude our uh, study of the outflow tracks with this algorithm. Now, I like this algorithms and uh, from a cardiology perspective, because see, it helps you to move in a very systematic manner. So whenever you talk about outflow tracks, the first step in our algorithm is to see how many outflows are there, whether there are two outflows, or whether there is only a single outflow. So if there are two outflows, you see whether there is they are related normally or they are transposed. In the normal related rate artery, then you can look at the degree of override more than 50% or less than 50% or the iotomitral continuity. If the, there is an iotomitral continuity, degree of override is 50% or less, you are talking in terms of TOF. If it is not, if there is an iotomitral discontinuity and if the degree of override is more than 50%, it's a DORV type TOF. TGA, you can have uh, same TGA or TGA VSD, and we have DORV or TG. That is the algorithm for the uh, two outflows. On the other hand, if there is a single outflow, you can look at the direction of blood flow into the PA. And if it is the same, it is a common arterial trunk. And if it is a reverse flow into PA, that is a top with the pulmonary atresia. So this is a kind of an algorithm which you can actually use for a patient uh, for a VSD with an overriding outflow tract uh, based on the number of outflows and the great artery relationships and the direction of flow. Often useful. One lesion which is not covered in this is the CCTGA where the clue will come from the atrioventricular discordance in the four chamber. Mm -hmm. So I will stop this lecture here 
and uh, go back and uh, see the questions. Too fast to understand. <laughs> We, was it too, too fast? No, this was just fine. Any questions can come from the audience. Please go ahead. It is too fast because what ha happens is when you get into a little more difficult territories, you know, one where we really need to uh, actually uh, spend a lot of time and keep interacting also, you know, because the four chamber view anomalies are lit obviously more easy to understand. Once you get into the level of the outflow tracks, the difference between the normal and the abnormal becomes a little bit more subtle. And when it comes to three vessel view, it becomes even more subtle. That is, a, that is the, the issue here. So obviously the key things which you need to understand from this is, I hope the tetralogy of fallow part is sort of uh, uh, clear. That is an important lesion. DORV and TOF is something which is often very difficult and very, very uh, confusing. Single outflow is important and the two lesions of common trunk and the uh, pulmonary atresia needs to be differentiated. And of course, the transposition. I think TG is extremely important and um, it is important to uh, uh, differentiate the TG and the CCTG. Um, I think uh, one question which was coming is the significance of more than 50% override. Yes. Uh, I think it is you know, sometimes difficult uh, uh, in the prenatal uh, part uh, when we're talking about 50% yes. and uh, this. Uh... Yes, I think, uh, you know, a uh, lot of people see us, uh, how, what is DORV? Uh, DORV is actually a no man's land. You know, it's uh, basically in a very simple English double outlet right ventricle means the right ventricle is giving rise to both the outflows. So how do you actually decide that? You know, one of the outflows will be obviously from the right ventricle. And if it is a normal related rate artery, the pulmonary artery is completely from the right ventricle. If it's a TGA type of DRV, the iota is completely from the right ventricle. Now the second outflow is the important thing here. One outflow is anyway coming to the right ventricle and the second outflow you decide. In a TOF, the override is such that, so if I can go back to that one slide which I showed, I'll just come back to that one single slide, outflow anomalies. Hmm. Just a second. Uh, here it is. Just give me a second. Yes, this is the one. Okay, this slide. Can you see that? So here, like, if when share, I draw this, share the screen. Huh? Oh, oh, sorry, sorry. Let me share the screen. Share screen. This. Yes. Now it's done. So with this, I think you can understand.